Before I had TB, and what did I know about TB? Um, I didn't know much. I was somewhat aware that in the Victorian times, a lot of people like died from it. I was about 16, no, 17 when I got, when I started experiencing the symptoms of tuberculosis. I didn't even know what TB was uh, until I'd actually got it. The thing about me and TB is that um, I had it when I was 54, but I also had it when I was 14. I had uh, pulmonary uh, TB, so it affected my lungs. They said I got meningitis, and after two months I found out that I got meningitis TB. I didn't know meningitis TB exists, I didn't know kidney TB exists, nothing. How many different types of TB we have, nothing. I got told I had TB in my kidneys, and I asked about um, what would happen to me. They said it's curable, so I didn't panic thinking I was going to die or out. I just got on with it. If I'm unlucky enough to breathe in the bog, uh, three things can happen. One, my immune system can wipe it out. My immune system can be strong and can just eradicate that bug. Um, second thing that can happen is my immune system can suppress the bug. I can become latently infected with TB. I haven't got any signs or symptoms. I haven't got TB disease, but I have got TB infection. And I can carry that infection for my whole life and it can pop up as TB disease many, many decades later in some instances. But also what can happen is I can then go on to develop TB disease quite soon after infection. This is particularly common in young children and in people who, whose immune system is compromised. My life, personally, was somewhat chaotic. I wasn't at home, I was having problems with accommodation, I wasn't eating, I was sleeping out, um, I was taking a lot of alcohol. So that in itself brought down my immune system. Um, which um, contributes. TB is more common amongst homeless people because they have compromised immune systems and therefore if they breathe in the bug they're more likely to go and develop TB and because they share quite confined air spaces they're also more likely to spread it to other people. But the disease is far more common amongst people who've arrived from countries where tuberculosis is still very prevalent and among people in the UK who have a high risk of exposure to TB. That aside, anyone can get TB. TB um, doesn't understand colour, class, race or creed. My nurse said it was quite likely due to stress. That that's what had, you know, I suppose, stress uh, affecting your immune system, etc. And that's what happened. I'd been coughing for about, like, three, four months. And those coughs were getting worse. And then there were, there were cold sweats that were coming up. Then I started to feel really lethargic. I remember being out of breath, just going up the road. And like, it was harder to breathe. And I knew something was wrong. The night sweats started off very, uh, you know, as a mild case of, you know, uh, just uh, common sweats that you'd get during the night. Uh, to the extent after a couple of months, the whole bed sheet would have to be changed every night. So it was soaking. Um, the peculiar thing is that even after all of this, uh, you know, the night sweats and everything, you never realised something was wrong because you never, I'd never heard of tuberculosis. The first symptoms should be you get, you know, blotches say, in your skin and everything. It was nothing, just headache. So the symptoms are going to be really entirely dependent on which organs of the body are affected. Um, the most common symptoms of TB and this is classically associated with TB affecting the lung, are cough, are weight loss, night sweats, fever, and a general feeling of fatigue. Some people get quite a lot of chest pain with it as well. But if you've got TB that's affecting your kidneys, or TB that's affecting bones, spine, the brain, the symptoms can be incredibly diverse. But these forms of TB aren't infectious. Only TB that affects the lung is infectious. I think the symptoms can be quite varied. And whatever it is, you know, if it's really that out, whether it is a cough, night sweats, chest pains, pains anywhere else, it's like go and get them checked out would be, you know, my, my message with that. If you have any of these symptoms, it's important that you go to your GP immediately. Because the good thing is about TB, it's completely curable, but you need to take your treatment until the doctor tells you to stop. 
If you have infectious TB, again, the good thing about being on treatment is that you become non-infectious, usually after two weeks. So you actually stop spreading the TB to the people you live with, for example. Treatment's clearly, clearly a lot better than it was um, sort of 40 years ago when I had it the first time. Absolute difference was that now it's treatments at home um, in the vast majority of cases. I know that for some people, you know, the first couple of weeks they might be in hospital if, um, you know, if they are contagious, etc, etc. But um, that would be very, very brief. But for me, um, all of my treatment was at home. It was make sure you take your medication, make sure you take your medication. And there was so much emphasis on that, which at the time I didn't know why there was so much emphasis. Obviously I'm going to take my medication. Once you start treatment, you can feel better very, very soon. So you might be tempted to stop treatment, but don't do that. Because if you don't complete your treatment, three things can happen. One, TB won't go away. It will remain in your body. Two, you can become infectious again, spreading it to others. And three, the TB can become resistant to the drugs that you are taking. I was on my antibiotics for six months altogether. I find it really hard taking my medication. I don't like taking tablets at all. A few times that I thought, oh, I won't take them today. But then I looked at my kids and thought, oh, I've got to, because um, I knew that, my doctors told me that if you don't take all the medication, you're more at risk for it not, but, you know, your TB not being cured and going away. I had to take at least 16, 17 tablets every day. What made it easier was I was put onto a team called Find and Treat. I was under what we call direct observation. So um, my tablets were given to me and I was taking my tablets in front of an individual. It's important that you go on the right treatment and you're supported in the right way. For example, if you have any side effects, the TB nurse is there to support you and guide you through this. If English is not your first language, we make sure that translators are there to help you understand and together we can put in place the type of support you need to help you complete your treatment. After my illness, I lost my memory, I lost my eyesight, uh, I lost walking. Uh, 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 a physiotherapist used to come to my house to give me the therapy. Occupational therapy started after that. A dietitian came to my house to monitor me, what I should eat and, and why I'm losing weight quite quickly. So I got very good help from NHS. Very good. Can't complain. Once I'd taken the medication, finished that, it was a process of just, um, just building up again and getting back to normal. But as I think it just takes time to sort of readjust and get back to, you know, completely back to normal again. It was a very, very sort of critical stage I'd hit in terms of the tuberculosis cycle because uh, I'd obviously had a collapsed lung and everything. To come back from that and live a very healthy life now where I can, you know, go for runs, do any sort of sport I want to do. Uh, it's just sort of an example of that fact that, you know, if you do your medication, go through the steps that the doctors ask you, you can be cured. Sometimes it takes longer to get better. Sometimes within six months you get better. In my case, it took me uh, about a year and a half. As soon as they stopped my medicine, it means my TB is cured. I do not need that medicine anymore. If you end up with a diagnosis of TB, don't be frightened by it. It was treatable, I'm treated, and I'm back on track. You, you know, you don't get it for being poor. You don't get it, you know, for, for any other reason, apart from you just happen to get it, it's just life and that it is curable. That's the main thing to tell people because a lot of people think you die from it straight away. But you don't, obviously, I'm still here. <laughs> don't be scared. 
and don't hide from people that you got TB. It's not like, you know, some disease which you can't talk about and it is curable.